Steve, you contacted the page a couple of days ago. Um, I don't want to out you on your story. So you, you <laughs> t- tell us about, this is why we don't script, because it, ju- it just means we can just have, you can open it however you want, mate. Tell us about yourself, mate. Um, so I... Straight in there, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just jump in. Um, so I, uh, I, I run a, a social media channel where I do pretty food, um, and it's all healthy and presented nicely. So that kind of started as a recovery process from my uh, bulimia, um, which manifested itself coming off of a teenage diagnosis with uh, borderline personality disorder. Um, so if we go back to when I was a teenager and when I was in my early 20s, which unfortunately was a fair few years ago, uh, there wasn't about really... Five, about five going by those. those yeah, we we'll, <laughs> we'll love that, we'll love that. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, there wasn't the support um, really for, for men suffering with, with that kind of thing, with an eating disorder. Uh, I, th- I sat in front of the doctor once, I, I plucked up the courage to go to the doctor and I sat down and he said, what can we do for you? And I said, I'm bulimic. And um, his words were, I'll be the judge of that. So I immediately shut down. You know, there was no talking at all. Uh, yeah. And I think it was from then I was like, well, I've kind of got to live with this. This is what my life's going to be. Um, and then you know, a few years later on, I thought, uh, I remember waking up one day and I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm worth more than this. I need to do something about this. Yeah. And and that was kind of day one of the recovery. Wow. He's, yeah. he's, sad, to hear, he's sad to hear what that daughter said. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. It, it took a lot for me to... Uh, it took a lot for me to admit to myself yeah. what I was going through. Um, and then to try and... You, you sit in the waiting room... And that's kind of like you, you, your mind's running around. Should I be here? What am I doing? What am I doing? And yeah. get called through. Um, so then for him to just to say what he said, it was just, you know, I, I was never going to believe was, in him, trust him. Was well, it kicking the nuts, isn't it, really? Yeah, it was. It was, yeah. A big shiny kick in the balls. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I think I said to you, because I, I, I was... I was diagnosed as, as bulimic years and years, years and years ago. Thank you for my, my the worst of that. But I remember one person said to me, but you're not a female. Right, but then you don't, you don't qualify. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly that. And I was just like, what? And it just put in, just, it just makes you go in your shell, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Um, but I, I still argue about my bulimia because, yeah, I've got a diagnosis and all this kind of stuff. But for, for me, I don't want to trigger anybody, but we're not going to whitewash what, what we say either. It's just because we're talking about our own perspectives. Yeah. For me, it wasn't really about weight loss or anything. It was like a weird self punishment thing i can't describe it it's, it's so bizarre i'm just glad it's over and done with man i think i think a lot of it comes from control uh you know there's very few things that we can control in our lives but we can control what we put in and take out of our body uh, yeah. <laughs> i think yeah that's that's quite strong but for me i wanted to kind of educate people i suppose that bulimia <laughs> isn't just about eating too much and then throwing up you know, it gets yeah. deeper than that. You know, it's it's this self hatred. It's this. I used to avoid mirrors or reflective surfaces because I just didn't want to see myself. It, wow. it, was, it was like a daily, every minute of every hour every, of every hour was just a, a fight with my mind. The the bulimia, the physical act of of kind of overindulging sometimes and making yourself sick was this much of yeah. of the issue. Uh, but I, mean, I wasn't a typical uh, textbook bulimic in that I didn't I didn't binge that much. I remember I remember one night I sat down with my girlfriend at the time, and I had a tuna salad and I'm talking a bowl of uh, spinach leaves with one tin of tuna dumped on top of it and a few cherry tomatoes. I ate that and I felt full. My stomach felt a little bit full. Yeah, and I, ha- I had to go and throw it up. So it wasn't just that I, I binge and eaten too much like shy. I, yeah. it was any kind of feeling of fullness, I panicked. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to get fat. Run to the toilet. Wow, but yeah. So how, how did you come to the? How did you come to the good side? Like what What was your science? Science and learning, learning about nutrition, learning about how the body works, 
uh, like I would read and read and read and read, and I would try to take these facts and and just accept them. Yeah, it was it would sometimes take a couple of months. It would sometimes take a couple of years for me to understand, acknowledge, and appreciate the science. But then trying to trying to put that into your brain, yeah, is is something else. Um, but slowly but surely. You know, 10 years goes by, 12 years goes by, and, and it gets easier and easier and easier to accept what you're reading, what you're understanding. Yeah. Do, do you think, I don't, I don't want to trigger, I don't want to trigger you, mate, so I, I, I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be waiting to know after, care after. Now, the trouble is I have to be careful with what I say, because sometimes I can actually trigger myself as well. But do, sure. do, you, do you think it's gone or do you think it's still there? And the, the, the reason I ask is with me, is I'm, I'm pretty healthy now, do you, do you know what I mean? It's, I know how to look after my nutrition, blah, 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 hence why the yeah. business. But chuck some Harry bows in front of me mm-hmm. and it's game over. And I have to, there's, there's, there is still that thing of just the, the binge. The binge. Yeah. There's, it's, it's hard to, to, I don't even know what that feeling is, but I know what that feeling is where you can just, are you, are you past that? No, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't binge, I would run away. Um, so I, I do a lot of work trips, so I'm staying away here, there and everywhere. Yeah. And my my first thought when, when my boss says, can you go to, is shit, how am I going to manage my eating? Where can I, I, I look at restaurants, I look at things that I could buy to eat. And I, and that's, I think that's because that's how I control my yeah. my mental side of things, is, is I control it by knowing what to put in my body. So yeah. if I'm thrown out of that, I panic. But that panic is is less than it used to be, and my coping methods are, are healthier than they used to be. So it's still there. And I, I don't yeah. imagine it will ever go. Um, my friend just asked us to go around for a barbecue in a couple of weeks, and I'm like, oh, okay, yes, I want to go, but yeah. I hope they don't want me to eat loads of burgers and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Do you, do, you, do you feel people would watch? <laughs> I think they'd watch if I have a plate where I kind of move something to the side or I don't eat that or I, or I ask for special things. And uh, yeah, I, I do feel uh, the odd one out, I suppose. Wow. Um, but, I mean, but, but I always say things like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not vegan. I'm not uh, Muslim or anything. So you can put bacon in front of me. I'm, I'm not these things. And these things are okay to be difficult yeah. when it comes to eating. Uh, so I, I tried to put a bit of... Uh, humor to it i suppose yeah. um but yeah look, that that worry is still there that but on my when i go to the gym on my training days i'm now eating 3300 calories so i'm you know, coming back from this major restriction that I, yeah. where i was at learning developing growing i'm now in the place where i can confidently eat you know, big big foods and big yeah. big numbers like that so I'm ten times better than, than I've ever been, but there is still that that monster lurking in my brain. Yeah, no, I, sure. I, I, um, I, I hear you on that. On I, yeah. I, I, I really do. It's yeah, you kind of. It's, it's we promote for man up is some conditions, even BPD. Some people say you grow out of BPD. I'm BPD. Thankfully, high functioning. I'm high functioning depressives as well. Sometimes that doesn't feel like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I think. Sometimes we have to get a, a grip is the wrong word, but I've said it now. Is sometimes we have to realise with mental health problems, issues, illnesses, whatever, sometimes they're not going to go away. So we have to make that decision, and it's not easy before anyone criticises, but we can say it's easy now because we're doing it. We live with rather than suffer from. Yes. We, have to, we have to make that really hard decision. We go, do we stay in the pity party or do we live with it? And I think once we can crack that living with it, same with me, like there is that trigger, like that binging stuff, especially with, with the lack of sleep and stress. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know it's there. I have to keep going, right, I have to live with this. The same as like BPD, I have, to, I have to live with it. Sadly, I haven't quite grown out of it. I use it to my advantage. I, I, I couldn't, I've, I've not heard people say that or someone say that before, but that is exactly my, my thought process is that with any mental illness, the characteristics that you display that if they come across as a negative to your life can actually be be, be uh, flipped. Yeah. So, so BPD is a, is a very strong characteristic of all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. 
you can use that to your advantage. Yeah. So people say that I've got incredible willpower and dedication, determination, and whatnot. And and I'm there thinking, well, that's just because I've used a really bad kind of crippling trait of my mental illness to my advantage. Yeah. And you know, I, you, you just say dedicated to going to the gym and that. And I'm thinking, well, that's because it controls the monster in my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not a superhuman. I'm just doing this for my own but my benefit. <laughs> no, no, good, good on you. And it's I think once you can get past that that tipping point. Once you, yeah, tip it, once you can get once you can get that in your head, isn't it? I, I think it makes the process a lot easier. Yeah, Trouble is to get to that is bloody horrible. And I'll apologise on your doctor's comment before that that can and I think that's what happens, especially more so with men's mental health. Yeah. I think comments like that is what makes us go back on our shell, uh, in our shells. And that's the problem. Men don't talk. No, no, we don't talk. And yeah, you know, we don't know how to talk, do we? No, well, it's normally because we don't know what the problem is in the first place. <laughs> we just let everything build up and up and up and up, and then our brain's completely, well, fucked. Yeah. We don't, we don't actually know what triggered it in the first place, which is why we promote try and try and nip it in the bud early. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that kind of recognition of, you know, if you're feeling angry or if you're feeling down or if you're feeling insecure, you're, you're allowed to be these things. These things yeah. are okay. Vulnerability is okay, but you need to know how to express them. You need to recognise actually what this feeling is and why it's been, yeah, why it's come 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 across you. Um, but without practice, through decades and decades of of not talking as men, without yeah. that practice, it's, it's it's difficult. And they're kind of they blow up in in other emotions like you know, anger yeah. and and whatnot. Uh, exactly, exactly that just. Blokes are just shit. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just shit at dealing with stuff. And I think it goes back to that thing where blokes are fixers, aren't we? We, oh, we are, I know some someone will take offense with that, but whatever. We like to fix stuff. And when we can't fix it ourselves, more, more, more stuff gets built into it. And then we're just like, we don't know what we don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's it. So yeah, again, well, we, we massively promote try to nip it in the bud early. The word is try because it's not easy, but nip it in the bud early. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that recognition and then kind of doing something positive with it is is key, definitely yeah. key. This, this, this is why I want to start talking about things, and this is why people like you doing what you do is, you know, leading the way. It's fantastic to see this being more of a normal thing. Yeah. Do, do, do you know what, mate? I, I would say um, eating disorders stuff is next I've... I don't know how many videos, a good couple of hundred. I think I've only ever spoken to one person about an eating disorder. It is so hard to get both to talk about it's some sort of eating disorder. Like literally next next to impossible. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Do people, obviously the person who said it called me, oh, you, you, you're not female. I don't know. I think there is I think there is that little taboo there, isn't there? Just, just lurk. I think yeah. it's getting, it, it is getting better, I, I think. I, maybe I want it to get better. I, don't I think, know. yeah. If that. you if you look at if you look at uh, what men how men and women kind of live together or have done over the years, where the this, this stereotypical want from a man for a woman is is you know the the pretty the the small the petite blah blah blah, then it would lend itself that women would be more affected by image by yeah. the way they look by but that kind of body culture. Um, whereas a man can grow into his forties, get a get a beer belly, but you know, still still provide the money, sort of thing, and yeah. all things are okay. Um, but that's you know, we, we're no longer living in those kind of Victorian times, are we? Uh, exactly that, and I think that the more the quicker we can break the taboos of open conversations, the world will be a much better place. And sadly, especially with like body mis body misphoria, you know the one I'm trying to say, yeah, like the like the the proper gym freaks who just that, that's their life and that's it of trying and again like half an inch of bicep and comparing themselves to social media. I think we're I think we're only at, I don't think we're even at a tipping point. No, that no chance. I don't, and and I hate saying that it makes me feel sick saying it, but I, I really think we've got some serious problems coming and, I, and yeah. I, don't, I don't want to sound dramatic but it's just I, I see it day in day out so I think the sooner I feel I'm repeating myself so I apologize but the sooner we can get a conversation starting earlier the better well I like when I started my uh my Instagram page 
I, I've, I've never mentioned bulimia on there yeah. until very very recently because I didn't want people to be kind of following me because uh, I'm a bulimic guy that, that cooks nice food yeah I, I didn't want that I wanted it to be separate it yeah. not, it's not that I was ashamed of of what I have come from I just didn't want that to be the main focal point but I hear you now that. yeah but now where social media has become this kind of part-time acting job and you've got to kind of put yourself out there as something that really ain't who you are. I, I now don't want people to start following me because I'm putting on this facade. Yeah. So so now I kind of want them to kind of realise the, the the story and, you know, actually this this all came because of, of something where, where I wasn't really well. Yeah. And uh, and, and that's okay now. And, you know, let, let's open up uh, in a dialect. No, good, good, good on you. Because I, I must admit, when when I was reading your message, I don't know, I'm looking at it now. But when I was reading, <laughs> and then because obviously I have to do the whole stalky thing just just to make sure you know, <laughs> secret neo Nazi, what could look like as only asked in ten years time, and whatever. And I found it, I found it bizarre is the wrong word, but I, I found it interesting that somebody who, who's lived the life you've had and, and and still living with it up to a point is there snapping photos of food and stuff like that. And I'm like, well done to you. You, you found, you, you, you found, yeah, no, you have, and well, well done to you, mate. I, I really do. So, just for we draw to a close, this is one. This is going to be one of those videos. I know straight one of those videos where people will watch it and will get some messages. Funny enough, normally from the misses, it'll be one of those where the misses will message to say something's wrong with blah blah blah, blah or think something's wrong. Do, do you know anyone who could help them? If someone's watching this and they're like, oh, yeah, maybe that is me. We'll, we'll, we'll see how come this video you'd want. Maybe that's the right way of putting it. For me, like, I, my, like my, my doors are open now. Like if someone if someone wants to come and talk to me or yeah. offload or get advice or or just anything, or just bounce ideas off each other, then, then do that. Yeah. I, I struggled a lot alone. And it was dark and it was horrible. And it got to the point where I was you know, attempting suicide. Yeah. And I don't want that to happen to anyone. So it's... I'd rather I'd rather just have have them people come to me. I'd rather a hundred people come to me and to talk rather than to think they're gonna have to struggle. Yeah, absolutely. And and it and it is horrible, isn't it? I, I think bleem bleem is 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 horrendous. Yeah. It, it, really, it really is just the whole process and what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Being careful. There might be my, my own trigger points, hence why I have therapy once a week and all sorts. But there we go. So, so I think you've already answered it. So, so if someone's watching this and sadly, if they can relate, what, what would you tell them to do? Talk to anyone who will listen. Yeah. Because talking, it opens up. It opens up your emotions. It opens up what you're keeping inside. And, and there's a catharticism about anything you talk about, isn't there? Yeah. But just start talking. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. So would you say the people in your life as well, and then we're all draw to a close, so I apologise. <laughs> but it's, other than that, that that one doctor's comment, and has anyone actually judged you for being open? This is, I'm not on about the internet, I don't care about people on the internet because it's irrelevant, but your, your direct life. Um, no, not judged me. No. No, I've never felt judged by the people that love me. I yeah. felt, I felt that I confused them uh, because yeah. because of the way I was acting as well. You know, and there was a lot of drugs and there was a lot of alcohol and a lot of anything to take me away from reality. Yeah. Um, so I think it was hard sometimes for them to see me as someone who was in a very vulnerable state because I was acting out like such an arsehole. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I've never felt judged or belittled by them though. No. Yeah, so, so is the people who I really care about or care about me, no one's actually judged me at all. No. I've had trolls because of men up, but do you know what? They're trolls on the internet. It means nothing to me in my life. No. I think I was going with that one. I think so. If, if anyone is going to be watching this and they're like, oh, maybe I should say something, I'll be very, very surprised if people do. People in your direct life who care about you would actually judge you. They might ask questions, but judging, I don't think they will. No, I think the only thing that that can be a bit of a, a blowback is when people don't understand. So they can ask questions that are that seem a little bit insensitive, but 
Yeah, yeah, that's when normally, you get that's normally, question. That, that's normally me to be honest. I'll, 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 but I'll just, when I get a question, I'll just, I'll just say it and I'm like, ah, shit, I didn't say that, but I hear what you're saying totally. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't think you know, you, the people that love you will never judge you, no, but that's what love is, isn't it? Exactly that, man. I think that that's the on that bombshell moment there, that's <laughs> a bang on ending, isn't it? Let, let me let me hit the record button, baby, one second.